Are Solgaleo and Lunala really legendary Pokemon? Stay tuned to find out the answer. Greetings and welcome to Poketalk. Today I'm going to discuss whether or not the mascot Pokemon for Sun and Moon are truly considered legendary Pokemon. Please note that what I am discussing today contains spoilers, so if you are not willing to uncover spoilers, then please skip this video as there will be more videos to come in the future. Before we get into all the details of the video, let's discuss the two Pokemon that are the topics of this video. Solgaleo and Lunala. Solgaleo is the Sun Pokemon and is a Psychic and Steel type. It is described as follows. Since ancient times, Solgaleo has been honored as an emissary of the Sun. It is referred to with reverence as the beast that devours the Sun. Solgaleo's body holds a vast amount of energy and it shines with light when it's active. It has a flowing mane with a remarkable resemblance to the sun. Its signature move is Sunsteel Strike, an attack that charges at an opponent with the force of a meteor, disregarding the target's ability. Lunala is the moon Pokemon and is a psychic and ghost type. It is described as follows. Since ancient times, Lunala has been honored as an emissary of the moon. It is referred to with a reverence as the beast that calls the moon. Lunala is constantly absorbing light and converting it into energy. With its wings spread to absorb the surrounding light and glittering like a crescent moon, it resembles a beautiful night sky. Lunala's signature Moongeist beam attack releases an ominous beam of light that disregards the target's ability. So what exactly makes a Pokemon legendary? Nintendo hasn't released an official definition of Legendary Pokemon, so it has left the fans to classify Pokemon as Legendary or not. According to one discussion board on the website PokemonDB, it is a general consensus that Legendary Pokemon are classified with the following prerequisites. 1. Available only once per save file, that is, without having to trade between other games or other save files. 2. They're unable to breed. 3. They have relatively high stat total, at least 600, with exceptions such as the Legendary Bird Trio from Generation 1 and the Ultra Beast from Generation 7. 4. They're unable to evolve. And 5. They're generally found at the end of the regional Pokedex, with the only exception being Victini, which was found at the beginning of the Unova Regional Pokedex. As a side note, before Generation 3, one final consensus was that legendary Pokemon were genderless. However, that was debunked with the introduction of the Eon duo, Latios and Latios, as well as Heatran and Cresselia in Generation 4, and the Forces of Nature trio, Tornadus, Thunderous, and Landorus, which all have genders. On to the first point where they are only available once per save file. Both Solgaleo and Lunala are obtainable a second time in the game without needing to trade in a post-story event where you take Solgaleo at night or Lunala during the day to the Altar of the Sun or the Altar of the Moon, respectively. You then travel through the Ultra Wormhole into an alternate dimension of either Sun or Moon depending on which version you're playing. In Sun, you arrive at the Altar of the Moon, and in Moon, you arrive at the Altar of the Sun. By flying to the Lake of the Sun in Pokemon Sun version with Solgaleo in your party, or to the Lake of the Moon in Pokemon Moon version with Lunala in your party, an event activates in which you receive a level 5 Cosmog. Through leveling, Cosmog will eventually evolve into Solgaleo in Sun version, in Lunala in Moon version. Hold on to that thought though, I'll discuss that in just a bit. The second point, the inability to breed is easy. Both Solgaleo and Lunala are in an undiscovered egg group and are unable to breed. That part they fall into. 
The third point of having a relatively high stat base definitely fits for both Solgaleo and Lunala. Solgaleo has a base stat range of 137 HP, 137 attack, 107 defense, 113 special attack, 89 special defense, and 97 speed. Lunala, on the other hand, has 137 HP, 113 attack, 89 defense, 137 special attack, 107 special defense, and 97 speed. Both have a 680 stat total, which compares to other legendary Pokemon, and they seem to be counterparts to each other, as they have opposing attack and special attack stats, as well as opposing defense and special defense stats. Skipping the fourth point and going to the fifth, both of them appear at the end of the Alola regional decks, with Solgaleo registering as number 291 and Lunala number 292. The only Pokemon that follow in the Pokedex after are the Ultra Beast, Magierna, and Marshadow. Finally, the last point is the inability to evolve. All Pokemon that have the ability to evolve are all obtainable multiple times in one save file by either breeding, wild encounters, or both. With the Cosmog obtained during the event at the Lake of the Sun or the Lake of the Moon, it will evolve into Cosmoem at level 43 and then once again into Solgaleo or Lunala depending on which version you are playing at level 53. With Solgaleo and Lunala having evolutionary preforms, this violates the rule of the inability to evolve. So to recap, Solgaleo and Lunala are available multiple times during a single save file without trading, are unable to breed, have relatively high stats, have evolutionary preforms, thus meaning they evolve, and are at the end of the regional Pokedex. Similarly to the factors which define life in biology, where an organism is considered alive only if it meets all of the criteria of life, the same can be told for legendary Pokemon. Both Solgaleo and Lunala do not meet all the prerequisites of being legendary, thus they are not legendary Pokemon. What do you guys think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Anyway, that's all with this theory, so don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more content to come. As always, thanks for watching.